In this program, we're going to show an example of a lesson designed to encourage pupils to consider the ways in which they learn best, using resources linked to Ready to Learn, the experiment. Meet Matthew Tosh, a former science teacher who now works with the British Association for the Advancement of Science. He's helped to devise the Key Stage 2 lesson plan that links the national experiment to the curriculum, available from www.teachers.tv forward slash experiment. Readiness to learn is about your ability to take on new ideas and your mind being open. It's not academic ability, and that's really important to get across to the children in the class. It's how ready are they at that moment in time to take on new ideas. We've put together four lesson plans, one for each key stage. So key stages one and two, we're looking at things like uh, balanced diet and how that affects the health. Key stage two, we're actually looking at preferred learning styles and we're bringing in things like brain gym. Here at the Hills Lower School in Bedfordshire, healthy living is part of the school's ethos, with a strong focus on regular exercise and a healthy diet. But how do these things put children in a learning frame of mind? Where and how do children learn best? And what can children themselves do to improve their readiness to learn? Get ready, because teacher Carol Humphrey's Year 4 class are about to find out. But first, Carol explains to the class what it means to be ready to learn. Now, some things you have control over. And you need to think about things that you can control about yourself and about the environment that within which you're learning. And we the lesson plan is excellent. It's got different options that are available, so you can pick and choose to develop their concept of readiness to learn. If you needed to, you could uh, use another option within the lesson plan to develop that even further in a subsequent lesson. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And it's all about your readiness to learn, what you do to make yourselves ready to learn. It's quite um, abstract, but a concept for children of this age to understand even the term readiness to learn. So they were with examples, um, they were, it was much more easy for them to understand what we were, what the concept was about. And we learn in all different places. Who can name some places that we do learning in? Environment. In the environmental area, which is located where? Right here. Um, which is located outside. Outside. So we learn all the time in many, many different places. So by the end of this lesson, you should learn how to improve your ability to take on new learning. To get started and to help the children distinguish between the idea of being ready to learn and academic ability, Carol hands round some prompt cards that come with the lesson plan resources. So you're in your teams. So we've got team one to team seven. So I'm going to give you some cards, and they have words on those cards that relate to readiness to learn. Taking the idea of readiness to learn and trying to get people to understand it, I thought a nice way of doing this would be to have some prompt cards on the table to promote discussion. So if you are wondering where to start a discussion, you can have a pile of cards that children can sort into true false or unsure. So you've got your ideas about what readiness to learn definitely is, the ones you're not too sure on, and then the ones you think, no, that's, that's more intelligence as opposed to readiness to learn. Katie. If, if, if two people think a different thing about one question, well, where should we put it? But when we do the class discussion, if you really do not agree, then put your hand up and give us your opinion, give us your ideas. The children get busy sorting the cards. Some have strong opinions about whether the ideas on them are about intelligence or about being ready to learn. Okay, how quickly can you memorise ideas or get or a Not very well for me. Not very well for me. No. Playing music in the background. Okay, Vols. who votes for that? Who, let's do a vote for that. Vols. Okay. Who thinks that helps you learn? Helps you learn. Who thinks that doesn't work? If you provided them with examples, then they could relate it to their own life, as in feeling, you know, have you ever started a lesson feeling sleepy? Um, did that have an effect on your ability to learn? And then they, 
you could see the lights going on and them saying, oh yes, I have felt sleepy before, and yes, it did make it more difficult to learn. And time, please. Quick whip round class discussion as to what you think will impact your readiness to learn. We think how relaxed your body feels. Well, you can't be too relaxed, because otherwise you might just get just go fall asleep or something but you have to be uh, relaxed enough that you're not like jumping about when people are talking around you because it's all really noisy your environment people talking around you so that could distract you from being ready to learn how clever you are how clever let's talk about how clever you are who is certain that your cleverness will have an impact on your readiness to learn? Amra, what do you think? Um, Catherine, Stevie and Natasha say it's false, but I think it's true because if, cause if you're, you don't know like something like two times two, um, then it will affect your learning. Well, I was the one that convinced Catherine and Natasha that mm -hmm. it was false because I, I've had my days at everything it doesn't really affect I mean it doesn't affect whatever you are even a goalkeeper because everyone makes mistakes that's very very important for you to take away I think from today's lesson as well that because you're very clever and we're all very clever at something what would happen if you were feeling unwell are you going to be as ready to learn no no I like to say to some people that a very bright person can be in a very poor state of mind for learning if they're tired, they haven't had enough sleep or food, uh, whereas a, a person who's not very intelligent can be really switched on to taking new ideas. Carol now moves on to one of the main activities in the lesson plan, brain gym. The pupils at the hills lower are familiar with some brain gym exercises, but today Carol is introducing some new ones. The brain gym activities that are described in the lesson plan were quite fun and interactive and that really helped them to understand that you can control your concentration and you can um, then practice it and improve it and then apply that to become more ready to learn and ultimately a better, more successful learner. One of the other options we've put into the lesson plan is the idea of brain gym, which a lot of teachers will be familiar with, but it's looking to see if that actually affects children's readiness to learn and their memory capacity, for example. So you could give children a list of 10 words or objects to memorise and then recall those from, from memory and then do the brain gym activity and see if that improves the results. Carol doesn't have time in this class to do the memory capacity experiment, but she introduces the brain gym exercises as another way to get you into the right frame of mind for learning. Geared up and ready to go with Brain Gym, the children move on to the main activity. Carol has chosen the first option from the lesson plan. The children consider their preferred learning conditions, how and where they best learn. Now we've done this in the style of a poster activity where children can work in a small group. They could look at their, you know, their bedrooms, uh, uh, their ideal learning environment, so it could be a, a fictitious beach or something, and then present their results to the rest of the class. The pupils begin to brainstorm about where they like to learn best. How good you learn outside um, uh, and empty, but when it's cold outside and it's not inside, you would like to work inside. You're confusing me. So can you please give me some of the success criteria that you think are important to be on this poster? Big letters, patchy colours, neat handwriting. Having agreed on the right success criteria and working in groups, the children get cracking on creating posters that show their ideal learning conditions. The most successful part of the lesson plan, I thought, was that it led on gradually to the children building up their understanding of the concept of readiness to learn. And then they had a very concrete work product at the end of it, which was the poster, which we can then use as a display to help remind them of different strategies that they can employ to uh, maintain their readiness to learn.
When our heading is brain health, the best way to learn is to stay focused. This bubble says drink water before you do homework. And this bottle down here says to keep your brain healthy, drink at least eight glasses of water. In the final few minutes, the children review what they've learnt. Did you know you should feel ready and to learn and have soothing music on? Be relaxed and have a drink of water. Soft music run in and keep your workplace tidy. Learn in a quiet pl place, be relaxed and calm, get a good night's sleep. Do your work in a quiet place or turn on some quiet music. Brain gym really helps. Focus is good and stay concentrated. I was really pleased. I, I wasn't, hadn't taught the lesson before, so I was really surprised how well the children got on with the activities and how successful they were and the progress they made from the beginning of the lesson through to the end. You could see marked improvement in their understanding of readiness to learn.